Here's our next problem. We have another right triangle, uh, and uh, I'm telling you that the length of this side is 11, and I'm telling you that the size of this angle is 70 degrees. This is a 70 degree angle, uh, and your job is to figure out how long is this side and how long is this side. How long is this side and how long is this side. Please pause the video and try to do this problem using the techniques and uh, notation you've been developing in these videos. Well, I'm going to use an asterisk to remind myself uh, that uh, this is the angle we're focusing on, and an asterisk to remind myself that this was information that we were originally given. Now, did you notice that this problem is different from the last few problems that we've been doing? Uh, the last few problems we've been doing have been problems where you've been given two sides. But now in this problem, we went back to uh, an earlier type of problem where you're given one side and one angle. So we're not going to do this the same as the previous problems, because uh, uh, here we're only given one side and one angle. So we have to go back to some previous techniques. For one thing, we're certainly not going to use the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem won't help us. Because clearly, to use the Pythagorean theorem, you have to know two of these variables. If you know two of the sides, you can find the, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. If you know two sides, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. Uh, but in this problem, I only told you one side. If I only tell you one side, the Pythagorean theorem isn't much help. So we're going to have to rely on our trig functions. Which trig functions are we going to be using? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, this asterisk is reminding us that we're going to want to be using this number 11. We want to use this number 11, which represents the hypotenuse. Let's go ahead and label the adjacent side and the opposite side as well. So we're going to want to use trig functions that refer to the hypotenuse, because that's the number that we know. Well, then the sine is a good candidate, because that refers to the hypotenuse. And the cosine is a good candidate, because that refers to the hypotenuse. But it would be futile to try to use the tangent if we want to use the hypotenuse, because the tangent doesn't refer to the hypotenuse. So these are the two signs that we're going to use. Um, we will use the sine to figure out how long the opposite side is. And we'll use the cosine to figure out how long the adjacent side is. In this problem, I asked you for both of these sides. But what if you only needed one of them? What if you only needed the opposite side? If you only needed the opposite side, you could just use the sine and forget about the cosine. Or if you only needed the adjacent side, you could just use the cosine and forget about the sine. So we can use these asterisks to remind ourselves of our plan, which trait functions we're planning to use. Uh, so we have cosine of 70 equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 70 equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Uh, now in this case, I'm actually not going to plug in quite yet. Instead, I'm going to do some algebra. How can we do some algebra here? Uh, remember, what we want to figure out is the adjacent side. How can we figure out the adjacent side? Well, we have to get it by itself. Uh, well, cross multiplying, remember, is a good way to get rid of the fractions. So let's cross multiply. Uh, again, just for the heck of it, I've decided not to uh, plug in just yet. Um, so when we cross multiply, we're going to multiply diagonally. Well, 1 times the adjacent side is just the adjacent side. And then multiplying diagonally the other way, we'll get the length of the hypotenuse times the cosine of 70 degrees. All right, and now this gives us a straightforward way to figure out how long the adjacent side is. The adjacent side is just the hypotenuse times the cosine of 70. The adjacent side is just the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. Well, we know how long the hypotenuse is, 11. So we have 11 times the cosine of 70. We can do this in one step on our calculator. Just type in 11 times cosine 70. And we'll get that the adjacent side is approximately 
Now, um, the fact is that once people um, have gotten a little ways into physics and are starting to get comfortable with this material, they don't usually start with this equation. Instead, they usually start with this equation. Um, so maybe now is a good time to start getting into the habit uh, of starting with this equation sometimes, if you feel comfortable um, with that. Uh, if you want to figure out the adjacent side from the hypotenuse, clearly you want to use the cosine. And it turns out that the adjacent side is just the hypotenuse times the cosine. So anytime you're given the hypotenuse and an angle, you can figure out the adjacent side. If you're given the hypotenuse and an angle, you can take the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, and that'll give you the adjacent side. So usually people just go straight to this equation. Uh, if you want to, you can st keep starting with this equation, uh, but eventually you'll probably get comfortable with starting with this equation. All right, now going back to our plan, our plan was now to use the sine function. Sine of 70, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. By the way, at this point, this is not the only way we could find the opposite side. Now we have many different options for finding the opposite side. For example, it should be clear to you that now since we know this side and this side, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to find the opposite side. I hope that now that you know about the Pythagorean theorem, you can see that since we know what two sides, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this remaining side. But that's not what people usually do on this problem, uh, because that would require us to use this new information. And people usually solve this type of problem by just using the original information. Also, at this point, if you wanted to, you could use tangent. Um, because the tangent refers to the adjacent side, and now we know how long the adjacent side is. But again, people don't usually solve problems like that, that, this, that way. Because again, that would require us to use the new information. And the convention is to keep using the old given information. So um, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong about using alternative approaches here. Uh, if you really want to, you can solve this in many different ways. Uh, but in these videos, I'm trying to illustrate the conventional way that these are solved. And the conventional way would be to use the sign right now. That way, we're just using the information we were originally given. All right. Uh, now, I'm not going to plug in yet. Instead, I'm going to rearrange this by cross-multiplying. Well, multiplying diagonally, 1 times the opposite side is just the length of the opposite side. And multiplying diagonally the other way, we end up with the hypotenuse term times the sine of the angle. All right, and again, eventually, um, hopefully, you're going to get so comfortable with uh, sine and cosine that you can just go straight to this equation. Most people eventually don't write this equation. They just write this equation. So I hope you can see that um, clearly, if you're given the hypotenuse, you can use the sine to figure out the opposite side. If you're given the hypotenuse and an angle, you can use the sine to figure out the opposite side because the length of the opposite side is the length of the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. The length of the opposite side is the length of the hypotenuse modified by multiplying it by the sine of the angle. All right, so it's perfectly fine if you want to start by writing this equation, but eventually you'll probably get comfortable if you just start writing this equation. That's what most people do. The length of the hypotenuse here was 11, but the opposite side is not 11. It's 11 modified by multiplying it by the sine of 70 give us the opposite side. And we can do this in one step on your calculator. Just type in 11 times sine 70. And we'll get the opposite side has a length of approximately 